Coming up on the FRC Open Alliance Show, 4322 Clockwork from California comes in off a great regional win last year and looking for big things as they approach the Reefscape season. Take a look at their bill blog. They've been doing a phenomenal job documenting their progress and we're going to jump into some of the things they've been working on putting a lot of different prototypes they've been doing, then hopping into CAD, showcasing how their elevator mech is looking to work, uh, some of their decision-making on going for only level one through three coral, which I'd love to dive more into as well. And then we're gonna be doing a live vision demo as well too with their drivetrain and showcasing more about what this team has to offer. So let's learn more about Clockwork and their progress coming up here on the FRC Open Alliance Show. This video on fun is brought to you by our viewers, supporters, members, and also in partnership with the following. Anymark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Anymark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. Go ad free and access our videos earlier when you support fun with a membership through YouTube Join. For $4.99 a month USD, you can now watch most of our YouTube videos ad free and gain early access to scheduled content with other options also available. Click the join button below to get started. Let's welcome on the Open Alliance show for the first time. 4322 Clockwork coming in from California last year, won the Aerospace Regional. Congratulations on that. I know looking for a big year this year, competing weeks three and six as well, too. So welcome on the show. Why don't you introduce yourselves? Let us know what you do on the team as well. And we got a lot of great stuff to cover today. Hello, my name is Drish, and I do the programming and fabrication. And my name is Anya, and I do design, build, and electrical. So this season we started off, we got a kit bot and we wanted to modify it just so we could see what it could do. We got a kit bot this year as a prototyping test base. So in the video, you can see um, when we drop in the coral, it would kind of try to like reorient itself. Um, and that just wasn't what we were looking for with our robot. But we actually did get really lucky this year because we had prototype with PVC of the same diameter back in December. So we kind of immediately knew in the season we didn't want to pick up off the floor, which is why we were using the kit bot for like source coral station feeding. Um, yeah, we wanted to test this because it wasn't something we had really seen a lot on Chief and we wanted a wide intake that would funnel down. So the idea with this prototype was that it had wheels in the middle that would kind of guide it to the side, but it didn't end up working because it would just get jammed and reorient itself like horizontally in the prototype. So we kind of quickly moved on from that and we were just like, it's not simple, there's too many wheels going on and we really needed something simple for this season. So then we moved on to our initial end effector prototype to launch the PVC out. So we made like a rough CAD of this model and then built the prototype off of it. And we really wanted to use what was around us. We built in what's called like the garage mindset, which is just use whatever you have around you unless you absolutely need to buy something. So this prototype was actually designed around using 53 tooth belts because our off season bot had 53 tooth drive belts on the swerve and we had to have a bunch of spares of them because they would die a lot. So using 53 tooth belts on our robot was just like, we have it, let's use it. So we came up with this end effector prototype and we tested it and it works pretty well. It only required us to buy one extra belt and a couple extra gears. So we're pretty happy. It felt like it effectively reached our garage mindset goals. And we have video of it. I love that whole concept, by the way, the garage mindset and stuff, like having that a thrifty grind to things, right? Like, I think that's really cool when you look at, you know, FRC, there's so many different ways you can approach uh, this as well, too. But I think going in the mind of like, hey, like, let's be lean. Let's go through and, and make sure that we're thinking at every step of the way through. I really like that approach. Is that something that your team has always done or is that something that you've kind of changed in the last couple of seasons? I mean, we've kind of had to always be in the garage mindset. Our team moves around shop locations a lot. Like right now we're meeting out of a church all of the off season. We just were meeting out of my garage and our lead mentor's garage. So the garage mindset kind of came from that. Like, let's just look around and see what we have here. And if we absolutely need to, we'll get something from like Home Depot. It's like 10 minutes away. So that's kind of where we really started to bring out the garage mindset. And then this season we were like, we need to just full send this garage mindset. So we kind of always like subconsciously built in it. But this year we like, we really gave it a name. So that's where the garage mindset came in. Yeah, great, great so, passion to have for that. Absolutely. Yeah. So this is the end effector prototype. So you'll see we kind of have it wide and then have it passively funnel in. And we saw like this was working if you send it in a little bit of an angle. So we thought this was good enough to send on our robot. And we kind of just locked in this prototype. So we 
blocked catted our like robot arc around Thursday or Friday after kickoff. And we kind of locked it in then, but we made a detailed model over the next week. So we knew we wanted something really simple and really reliable. So we ended up going with the single stage elevator with the passive intake and a statically mounted shooter at the end because we were like, this fits our simple goals. We have most of this stuff for this. Our off-season bot had an elevator, so we can just steal some parts from there. Everything else is kind of just wheels, belts, pulleys. We have them laying around. So we're pretty excited, and we ended up with this more detailed CAD model about a week later. So first, we have our intake, which, as you saw on the prototype, is just passive. We feed only from source. We're not doing for coral station. And it's just a few pieces of bent polycarb, and it's wide because we really wanted a wide intake that just funneled down and didn't use a lot of parts. So the intake has three pieces of bent polycarb and two tubes, and everything just rivets onto the elevator support structure to build off of what we have so it doesn't need extra tubing or anything like that. And we just felt like the simplicity of this design really aligned with our build simple garage mindset and was definitely within our limited manufacturing resources. So we decided to go with this intake. Um, next, we have a single stage elevator. It's chain driven and geared four to one. Like we mentioned, we have some of the parts for it from our off season bot. So we figured it was simple. We could build it pretty fast because we already have some of the parts laying around. We just have to assemble it. And that also aligned with our garage mindset pretty well. So for some more specifics, you can see the picture on the left are our custom bearing blocks that we're using that we took off of our off-season bot. We already had them, so it was just cheaper and faster for us to reuse them than to buy them caught somewhere else. The chain is attached to the carriage with some thrifty chain comb. And it's hard stopped at the bottom at its feed and L1 state, so that's the picture on the right. And then it's hard stopped again at the L3 feeding state, which is the picture in the middle. And the elevator is mainly going to be manufactured by us. We're just going to buy some tubing and then just drill the holes ourselves. We're going to use the gussets and stuff that we get from Fabworks. Use code FRC4322 for 5% off your Fabworks order. And we're just going to match drill those holes. So it's really easy and fast manufacturing that we're hoping to knock out this weekend. Then we have our end effector and our algae flipper. So we decided that we just wanted to score L133 and remove algae from the reef. And we we're thinking of adding in some processor algae pickup off the floor in a little bit. So our end effector is just statically mounted to the carriage with some two by ones. And then on the ends of the end effector plate, we have the algae flipper so that it's just some polycarb rollers that flip out and then flip back in. So that allows us to remove the algae and score L2 or L3 without needing to move the drive base, which we thought was really important because it would save us a little bit of time, like in a match and a little bit of time in a match is really important. And the deployment motor chains down to the carriage to help keep our CG a little bit down. One of the things I think too, without, with not going L4, that might give you a little bit more advantage in that CG as well too, right? Cause you're not going a little bit higher as well. So that might actually in the end uh, help you out in that progress too. Yeah, and we just felt it was a lot simpler. We didn't need a two or a three stage elevator to get all the way up to L4. And we thought that we could crank out an L1 through L3 faster. And we thought that having a little bit more practice would also give us a little bit more of a competitive edge for our week three. Yeah. So then we have the like more final version of our end effector. The original one we showed was just like for the prototype. So we had some like reference point to go off of. So. We had the end effector and algae flipper a few days after we had the elevator. Um, the design for the end effector really just started off again using what we had. So the 53 tooth belts, 24 tooth pulleys. Um, the compression on our end effector is about half an inch and it uses 1.625 compliant wheels. And the motor is inside the end effector plate so it stays nice and protected and everything in there. And then going to the sensors, we have two Redux Canon color sensors. And going back to like our garage mindset, we can using what we have, we got these sensors donated to us and we heard it worked pretty well. So we were like, okay, just send it. And the purpose of these sensors are kind of similar to what we had on what was there on Cranberry Alarm. The, the one closer to the funnel was used to know when the coral is completely past the, like when it's safe to move the elevator up. And the one closer to the end of the end effector is just used to know when the coral is completely out of the robot. And, and so you have been able to do some testing with that and it's been successful for you so far? 
So we haven't gotten the Canon color sensors yet, but we've seen pretty successful results as from especially from RI 3D, looking at that early on this design. So we saw it from there and like, okay. It's yeah, I mean, I, as somebody who filmed on, on Cranberry Alarm, they definitely worked out quite well. So I do hope that they work for your team as well too. So the latest mechanism we've added to our robot is the algae flipper. So the flipper pivots with chain and a turnbuckle and we have rollers that are wrapped in cat tongue tape to remove the algae from the reef. So it just flips out to remove the algae. And then once it's off, it just flips back in. An algae flipper clears the carriage, like all of the elevators, so it can just flip out and in regardless of what position it's in. Um, we decided to have the rollers stick out on the sides of the end effector plates, just so again, we don't need to move that distance to get the algae off of the reef while we're scoring. And we have a lot of parts for the algae flipper already, like the stuff for the pivot that we're just going to take from our off-season bot, belts, pulleys, and a few other things. So you mentioned you might look at trying to go processor as well, too, at some point. Does this mechanism integrate potentially into like a floor pickup or floor manipulation for the algae? So we actually were thinking of putting our algae floor mechanism like underneath our intake. So if we go back to the overview of our robot CAD, you'll see there's like a little bit of space underneath the polycarb intake so we're thinking we might put something there it also would help us like balance out our robot because it would get a little bit heavy otherwise on the one side where our end effector is so we do have our battery there on the intake side to help balance out the weight but we think that adding something for the processor there would also really help us out so for this year we wanted a simple vision solution that we didn't have to spend a lot of time tuning and could send focus like dial in on our scoring automation so we determined early, pretty early on that we wanted 2D vision tracking instead of 3D with full field odometry because we wanted the faster FPS to automate driving to a reef and auto scoring so that we can see our, so when we see our desired tag, what we want to do is we see it and then we just like immediately drive and move our elevator up and score. So what's vital for this is that the cameras have to be tracking the tag at all times after it locks on and it cannot lose it as you get closer and closer to it. So what we did on our uh, robot is we tilt the cameras a bit up and so that they're facing the front and you know to tilt it up so that as you go closer you can still see it all the time and then we also offset we have two cameras and they're all offset so that when you align right to the center of one of the cameras basically aligns to the, one of the scoring pegs of that reef location and as for auto what we did was we want to use our auto scoring like during auto so it's like we get our we get our robot to the tag and then when we detect it we let the command take over and then just score it for us and we thought that'd be pretty reliable so right now we actually going to have a demo of our our auto auto, auto alignment So we wanted our command to work is the driver can just press one button and as they get closer to the tag, at some point when we see the tag with the camera, then the robot just takes it over. But until then, the driver can uh, drive the robot. Hold on. We lost comms again, but I think the demo is pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Uh, what are you using for like your vision software or, or your padding or anything like that? So we're using photon vision. So in the off season, we actually ran with like six cameras and we had our entire like pie stack. So we're kind of just using that vision system over here. And right now we have one camera just taped onto a robot, but obviously for actual robot, it'll be tilted more upward and at a different angle. Well, before we let you go, let's get a quick, one more thing for the Fabworks promo code. Let's get that on camera so everybody knows. Make sure to use code FRC4322 for 5% off your Fabworks order. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much for taking time to give us an update on your progress. You, you all have been doing a phenomenal job on your build blocks, and make sure you check out on CheapDelphi.com their current progress for that. And we can't wait to see what you keep doing, and we can't wait to see you uh, as you continue on throughout the season and back on here as well, too. Thanks a lot, and good luck the rest of the way. Thank, Thank you. you. Andy Mark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to andymark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions.